So, in writing over there are hundreds of thousands of people all along the highways and they can't get in. In other words, you're very good at real estate. You got in. Congratulations. Congratulations. It's a great way to spend a very, very important day. And you know what that day is. We have so many friends and so many family. And uh, look, Memorial Day, so important. It's our day, and we have to be very proud of it, and we are very proud of it, and it's an honor to be with you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So, Rolling Thunder, I will say, no matter where I go, Rolling Thunder, look at all these bikers. Do we love the bikers? Yes. We love the bikers. But all over the place, no matter where I go, there's bikers, and they come with the bikers, and the bikes are all over. We've had cases where we'd have, like, I'd make a speech, and we'd have 500 bikes. We'd have 1,000 bikes. And I said, what are they all doing here? And my people would say, they're here to protect you, Mr. Trump. It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. And I want to tell you, some of these people are tough. And some of the guys I see on that bike, I'll tell you what, they're rough. And I get out, and I shake their hands, and they are, I'll tell you, there is love there is love, and it's an incredible feeling. And that's why I wanted to be with you today, and I really appreciate being invited. Because we're with you 100%. We're with you 100%. 100%. Thank you. He just said, and we're with you 100%. Well, we're going to do some things. that are, We can't have Hillary Clinton be our president. That I can tell you. That's all we need. That's all we need. And just so you know, and speaking of that, as you know, she wants to abolish the Second Amendment. Remember that. And we are going to protect our Second Amendment, every little inch of our Second Amendment. And the NRA, as you saw, the NRA just came out last week and they endorsed Donald Trump sooner than they've ever endorsed any candidate ever before. So that was an honor. And they are amazing people. Amazing people. So we have a lot of things that we have to straighten out in our country. Number one, we have to rebuild our military. It's been decimated. It's been decimated. When you think of the great General Patton and all of our great generals, they're spinning in their graves when they watch, we can't beat ISIS. We're going to beat ISIS. We're going to knock the hell out of them. We're going to end it. We're going to end it. Remember that. So we're going to rebuild our military. We're going to make it bigger and bigger and better and stronger than ever before. We have no choice. We have to do it. And by the way, it's the single cheapest thing we can do. Believe me. So we're going to rebuild our military and we're going to take care of our veterans. Our veterans have been treated so badly in this country. You have a secretary that last week said, no, the wait time doesn't matter. Forget about wait time. I know people and I've gotten to know so many vets and we just raised almost $6 million for the vets because I didn't do a television show. I said, let's do this. And we're announcing on Tuesday all of the groups that we put up this money and we raise this tremendous amount of money because we love the vets and that's going to be announced on Tuesday. All of the groups that have gotten the money will be announced on Tuesday. We're having a big press conference and it's going to be great and it's going to be a great day. But we have to take care of our vets and in many cases illegal immigrants are taking much care, really are taking much better care by this country taken care of than our veterans. And that's not going to happen, okay? It's not going to happen. We're not going to allow that to happen any longer. Now, we have so many different cases, folks, where you look at what's going on in the border. When I announced on June 16th that I was running for president, by the way, who the hell would have thought this was going to happen, right? Right? Remember they said, June 16th, I watched all these pundits. By the way, the press, liars. They're the worst. They are the worst. Low lives. These are the, some of the worst, most dishonest people. 
I actually had a story today. It was sort of interesting. Somebody wrote. But, you know, I have 73 people on my staff. And I won. Long ahead of schedule. You know, I was supposed to be going to Cleveland and July. And it was going to be a big fight. And they didn't know if I could win then. They were going to have even, they even talked about having a second convention in August. Stuff that nobody ever even heard about. And look what happened. I'm one. We won. We, we. I'm just a messenger. But we won. And Hillary can't even beat Bernie. She can't beat him. And beating Bernie would not be tough, in all fairness. Although he is right about one thing, trade. Guy's right about trade. He can't do anything about it. But we do agree on one thing, trade. Our country is being ripped off so badly on trade. We're going to make the greatest trade deals you've ever seen. We're going to make our country rich again, strong again. It's going to be America first. Not all these other countries that don't even like us. It's going to be... It's going to be America first. We're going to be the smart country again. We're not going to be the dummies that the world takes advantage of. Even in our military, you've been seeing me. We defend so many countries. We defend Japan. We defend Germany. We defend Saudi Arabia. We defend South Korea. When the maniac in North Korea raises his head, we send our ships, our planes, we're all ready to go. But we're not properly taken care of, folks. And this isn't 40 years ago where we could do it. We're the highest tax nation in the world. By the way, my tax plan, we bring it down so much, especially for business and for the middle income people. We bring the numbers down so low, lower than any other candidate running, even the ones that have already been vanquished. We have the lowest tax. We have a great plan. I don't care about the low. We have a great plan. It's going to put people back. They're going to want to have an incentive to go out and work and make a lot of money and have great jobs. And we don't have great jobs. If you look at the job, the unemployment rate, the real number is 20%. And it could be more than that. Because people that look for jobs and give up, they're considered statistically employed. Folks, no more. We are going to create jobs. We're not going to let Mexico and all these other countries take our companies. They're taking our... You look at Carrier, you look at Nabisco, you look at Ford, hundreds of other companies. They're moving to Mexico. They're moving to other nations. And our people are left jobless. And we don't manufacture things. I looked, we just won the primary systems in New York, in Pennsylvania, and Mar all over. Maryland, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Delaware, everywhere. We had a big streak. And then Indiana. Oh, do we love Indiana. Because that was going to be the firewall for my opponents. And it turned out to be the firewall for me. We won in a landslide. Of course, I want to thank the great Bobby Knight. It's not bad when you have Bobby Knight, right? Bobby Knight in Indiana. So we're not going to let it happen anymore that a carrier can announce very routinely 1,400 people you fired were moving to Mexico. They want to do that, and there are consequences. And I'll tell you what the consequences are. Every time they make an air conditioner, we're going to have strong borders. And by the way, we are going to have a wall, and I mean a real wall. We are going to have a wall. Who's going to pay for the wall? Not even a doubt, by the way. You know, Mexico, and I have no problem. I love Mexico. I love the Mexican people. So many of them, I do business with them. They work for me. I have thousands. They're phenomenal people. Their leaders are too smart for Obama and too smart for our leaders. Our leaders are selling us down the tubes. So when Carrier goes to Mexico, every time they make an air conditioning unit and try and sell it across our now very strong borders, you know what's going to happen? 35% tax. And you know what's going to happen then? They're not going to want to move. When they know that's going to happen, they're not moving. Because we're losing our guts. We're losing our companies. We're losing our jobs. We're losing manufacturing. When I was campaigning in New York and other places, I look at upstate New York, out on the island, places I've known all my life. I grew up in New York. You look at these states, it's absolutely barren. You see these factories that were vibrant 20 years ago. And by the way, Bill Clinton signed NAFTA, probably the worst deal economically that this country's done in 100 years. NAFTA has single-handedly wiped out much, really, single-handedly 
wiped out so much of our manufacturing. It's moved to Mexico and other places. So Hillary is, a, she doesn't know anything about jobs. She doesn't know anything about jobs. She thinks the VA is doing good. Did you see a statement a couple of months ago? The Veterans Administration is doing a good job. If she thinks they're doing a good job, then I've been wasting a lot of time because I know the vets and they are miserable with what's happening. I have a vet that came up to me. He waited seven days to get to see a doctor. And after seeing the doctor, the doctor said, I'm sorry, I can't take care of you now. I'm going on vacation. And this is happening all over. And you're losing thousands of people are dying. Hard to believe even of our vets, our most cherished people. Thousands of people are dying, waiting on line to see a doctor. That is not going to happen anymore. And if there's a wait, we're going to give the right for those people to go to a private doctor or even a public doctor and get themselves taken care of, and we're going to pay the bill. And that should have happened a long time ago. That should have happened a long time ago. So we're going to have great trade deals. China made $505 billion in terms of trade deficit with this country. Think of it. It's almost like a miracle. For years this has been going on. 300 billion trade deficit. 400 billion, 500 billion trade deficit. You would almost say, how can our country even survive? But we're right now, we're sitting in a bubble. We're right now in big trouble. We owe $19 trillion. We made a bet, and thank you for that sign. Look at that man. You are definitely a Trump man. Thank you. I appreciate it. But we're going to bring it back, and we're going to bring it back fast. And frankly, when NATO, you know, you look at the 28 NATO countries, many of those countries are not living up to their obligation of paying us. So we're protecting NATO, we're protecting these countries, and they're not paying up. We're protecting Japan. One of the, and I love Japan. We're going to continue to protect Japan, hopefully. But you always have to be prepared to walk, folks. You know, you always have to be prepared to walk. We don't want to. But one of the generals was on television the other day. Donald Trump said he's going to protect Japan. And I do want that. But he said, we pay. They don't understand. Japan pays 50% of the cost of the protection. Doesn't Mr. Trump know that? Japan is paying 50% of the cost. Now, you know this. If he says 50%, it's much less. But when I heard that from one of the dishonest reporters that I do business with, these are the worst. But when I heard that, I just asked a stupid question. I said, well, let me ask you, they're paying 50% of the cost to defend themselves. Why aren't they paying 100%, right? You know the kind of money we're talking about? And then they wonder why this country is poor, because we're a debtor nation. So we have it. Think of this, Saudi Arabia. We protect Saudi Arabia. Before the oil went down, and now they're still making a fortune, they're still making plenty. Before the oil went down, Saudi Arabia was making $1 billion a day. We protect them. We, they wouldn't be there but if we gave up on them 20 years ago or 10 years ago. Like a week later, whatever it might be, they'd be gone. Saudi Arabia, why aren't they paying us at least what the hell it costs? We have leases where we actually pay rent. So it's going to be a whole different ballgame. And let me tell you, we are going to actually get along with these countries. We will get along with them. China is an example. The biggest bank in the world is a tenant of mine in one of my buildings. I get along with them great. The Bank of America building in San Francisco, I own it with a group. It's a great building through China. 1290 Avenue of the Americas, own it. Through China, one of the biggest buildings in Manhattan. I own all the stuff. I, I got it through China, indirectly. And it was through war. It wasn't through friendship. Believe me, it was not easy. It was not pleasant. Because they want to take whatever we have. You take a look at the intellectual property that China is stealing from our country. Hundreds of billions of dollars a year. We don't even mention it. We don't even talk about it. So those days are going to change. And here's the thing. We'll get along better with China. In fact, they just renewed their lease in the building. I said, are you sure they want to renew their lease? And I become a little hostile. But see, what people don't know, I'm not angry at China, and I'm not angry at Japan. They send us hundreds of thousands, millions of cars. We give them nothing. You look at a trade imbalance. We send them beef, and they don't even want to take the beef, right? We send them wheat. They send us cars. The, the numbers are staggering. Now, I'm not angry at Japan, and I'm not angry at Mexico. They're killing us on the border. And they're killing us with trade. 
So many companies moving to Mexico. It's the new China. Smaller version, but the new China. I'm not angry at China. I'm angry at our president for being a grossly incompetent president of the United States to allow this to happen. To allow this to happen. So, folks, in a nutshell, it's an honor to be here. And I'll tell you what really amazes me. I thought this would be like Dr. Martin Luther King, where the people would be lined up from here all the way to the Washington Monument, right? Unfortunately, they don't allow them to come in. And you have all these people on the roads and they're all waving and going crazy. We got to do this for next year where Rolling Thunder allows everybody to be here. Because I'm telling you, coming in, I said this, coming in, hundreds of thousands of people, the most beautiful bikes I've ever seen in my life. We do like those bikes. The most beautiful bikes. We got to get those people here. And I know one thing, you're going to all behave yourselves, right? And I know one other thing, there won't be any paid agitators in this group, okay? You know, I make a speech. I made a speech the other day. We had 25,000 people, and then you have 200 people outside, and they're like professionals. You know, the signs are made professionally. They have the masks, the whole thing. You know, whenever you see a mask, by the way, the police told me this. Do we love our police? Do we love our police? Okay, you better. But law enforcement does a great job. But they told me, anytime you see a mask, they're professionals. And they're all masks. So many people with masks on. Because they go from one to the other. They agitate. And I said, boy, I'll bet there aren't going to be agitators. Look at all these people. I'll bet there aren't going to be agitators in this crowd. If there are agitators in this crowd, nah. Remember, be very nice to them, folks. I'm saying that on the record. I'm saying that for the press. Be very nice. Don't hurt them. Don't hurt them. You know, I've had some fun. We've started, we have the biggest rallies by far, far bigger than Bernie Sanders says, far bigger. I mean, look at today. They say you have 600,000 people essentially here trying to get in, but that's gonna, not going to happen. But they say you have 600,000. So we have these tremendous rallies. Nobody ever talks about it. They don't talk about it. On the other side, they talk. I had a rally where I had 18,000 people. Bernie had seven. With my rally, they said, Donald Trump made a speech today, blah, blah, blah. That was it. With Bernie's rally, same time, they said, Bernie Sanders had a tremendous crowd of 7,000. I said, I had 11,000 people more than he did. They don't mention it. And they won't mention the kind of massive crowds that we have here today. And these are great people, great Americans. These are unbelievable people. So I just want to tell you, folks, our country doesn't win anymore. We don't win with military. We don't win with health care. We don't win with borders. We don't win with education. We don't win with anything. And by the way, we are going to repeal and replace Obamacare. Just remember that. And we certainly don't win for our veterans. It's going to change, folks. We're going to win so much that you're all going to come. And I have friends in this uh, crowd that are big bikers. People you would least suspect. And they are bikers. And they love it. And they're proud of it. But we are going to start winning again. And we're going to win so much. We're going to win, win, win. We are going to win so much. Some of you, my friends in particular, will call me up and they'll go, Mr. President, please don't win so much. It's not nice. You're beating everybody. You're beating all the countries. You're beating too many jobs, too much success, too much wealth. Mr. President, don't win, please. And I'm going to say we're going to keep winning because we are going to make America great again. And I'll tell you, we're going to make it greater than ever before, and we can do it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.